for any reason, make sure that you have someone as your buddy. And if you don't have a buddy, um, find a person in a yellow vest and they can help escort you to a safe place. We know that there have been some folks that don't agree with us, that are watching us, and we know that the police are aware of this march. Um, so we just wanna watch out for people's safety. if someone is illegally arrested. Definitely going to that one. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to get there, but my boss is pretty cool, but. <laughs> Go! 
friends in Iowa and I'm like, you guys are so lucky. I had a friend who used to tell me about hiking in Iowa. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yes, 
Trying to kill me. Reminds me all too much of Seattle, Marcus.
to sort of he make needs up to the be difference. Like a yeah, right. Like where she can't hear nothing. Right, right. Yeah, because otherwise she like, like goes on and on. Oh, I'll line up with them. No, 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 no. You have to like turn that and be like, right, right.
territory of the Lummi and Nooksack Coast Salish peoples, who have Woo! lived here since time immemorial and remain sovereign nations today as recognized by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. As anti-imperialists com committed to decolonization, we affirm that any society built on this territory must be established in good faith partnership with the Lummi and Nooksack nations, and we are committed to building the relationships necessary to make decolonization a reality. We acknowledge, acknowledge that the prison industrial complex disproportionately impacts Lummi and Nooksack peoples locally, as evidenced by disproportionate incarceration and use of force rates here in Bellingham. And our campaign surrounding defunding the police is connected to our commitment to decolonization. So why are we doing this? 
Um, there's a coalition in town of over 10, around 10 organizations, and we've created a demands letter about defunding the police. Who here has seen the petition that we've made? All right. Great. So um, we, we sent this letter and this demands letter to the mayor and to the city council, and um, we haven't heard anything. We've heard silence, and we've heard no commitment. So we're here today to really make sure that you can hear us and hear, hear what, what we have to say. Um, I'm going to read the demand that the coalition has, just so that we're all on the same page going forward. Can I ask that question? Yeah. Is this the memo that had 11 points? It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So, we call for at least a 50% cut to Bellingham Police Department funding for the 2021-22 budget and a reallocation of those funds towards community-led health and safety systems, as well as other programs for community well-being. We urge city officials to admit their laxity as complicity and to restore their integrity and perceived good faith from the community by realizing these demands. We expect funding to be reallocated from BPD to these programs in ways that may include funding community organizations who can handle the infrastructure of program creation and or expansion. One, expanded mental health services. Two, safe, secure, and affordable housing for our community. Three, expanded substance abuse treatment and harm reduction services. Four, community and cultural spaces for black and indigenous folks. Five, supporting black and indigenous economic development. Six, expanded domestic violence and sexual assault services. Seven, workers cooperatives. Eight, food sovereignty programs. Nine, community land trusts. 10, diversity, e equity, and inclusion in education and youth programs. And 11, expansion of early child care and before and after school programs. So, so we, we sent this out. We sent this out. Yeah, give it up for those demands. So, so we sent this out. We've been at the listening sessions. We've done a phone zap campaign. And we've sent letters, but there's just been no, no, com no commitment and no comment. So we felt that it's important to come here and raise the stakes a little bit um, so, that, so that we can really be here. So the 11 programs that we mentioned, those were just the ideas that the coalition came up with. But we know that there's a lot of brilliance and creativity and wisdom in this community. And we feel like that moving forward, Bellingham should include the people when creating budgets so that, so that there's a process and a forum to listen to the people and listen to the wisdom in this community. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, open the mic up to whoever wants to come forward, okay? And um, we have some ground rules and some uh, logistics to go over. So um, when you come up, we're going to do something called progressive stack. Who here has heard of progress progressive stack before? Okay, great. So here's how it works. You're going to come up, and um, progressive, stack, uh, progressive stack gives priority to voices that are traditionally marginalized. Uh, whether that be because of race, ethnicity, gender, class, age, etc. Um, so we're going to have a list um, right here. And you're going to come up and put your name on the list, or, or you can raise your hand and we'll come to you. Um, so when you do that, you're going to come up and say your name, or if you want to remain anonymous, to say that, and to say what topic you want to speak on, just really briefly so we can uh, organize the night. And then lastly, uh, if you consent to being filmed or not. Um, we want to record this for all the city council leaders that aren't here tonight so that they can hear your words too. And the easiest way to do that is filming. But we totally respect if you want to stay anonymous and if you don't want to be filmed. So let us know at that time. Um, the next thing is that, um, let's see. We, we're going to do a three minute time limit for everybody and some guidelines for when you're speaking is to speak from the heart and um, step up, step back, which means that if you're somebody that traditionally is very loud and takes up a lot of space, maybe take a step back and let people who, and if you're somebody that, you know, it's a little scary to get up here, like push yourself, we wanna hear from you. Um, there's a one mic policy, so whoever's holding the megaphone, one megaphone policy, you have the mic and let's all listen to that person. And let's see. Um, to use I statements, so speak from your own experience, don't speak for other people, all right? And um, assume best intentions, intentions, but challenge points of view if you disagree. So um, 
this this event is not is not an attack on you, right? This is an event where we feel gener like real frustrations that, we, that we've been met with silence, and so we feel like it's really really important for you to listen to what folks we have to say. So um, if you want to come on up, please let's start this process, and we'll start our first first ever Bellingham People's Budget Assembly. <laughs> Can we want to please uh, share it? Groups, please. What is our name? Shakti.
We have Ida, um, and you can present the song. Hey, the cheeky kid. This isn't working. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Ida. Uh, I've lived in Bellingham for about three years. Um, you know, it's funny because when I first moved here, I felt um, this sense of belonging that, you know, was kind of superficial you know but I felt like there was there was more movement and more community more accessibility to make change and to feel the sense of solidarity with my community just by being and over these last couple of months as I've stepped into my activism I've noticed that that is exactly superficial we're needing accountability with a listening session. I'm waiting for action. We're all waiting for action. <laughs> what we need first, though we have these demands, which are awesome, might I say, might I add, is participatory budgeting. We need to know where this money is going. We need to know how we can reallocate these funds in a way that is efficient and effective for our community. And the way that we've heard so far, and the way that is most apparent right now, is to defund the Bellingham Police Department. There is $34 million, approximately 36% of the general fund for the city that goes to the Bellingham Police Department. For what? Yeah. For what? Yeah. How has that demonstrated any sort of positive support for our community? And imagine if we just took, we're asking for 50%, but just imagine if we took 10%, I mean like any, anything helps, right? We have 11 demands here, all of which are most definitely going 
and to help our community in some way. So we implore you to consider your privilege, your power, and your position. Mm. Please, do something for us. I know you can. Erica, um, and just a point of process, um, one thing that I forgot to mention is um, a couple of hand signals that I feel like we should all learn in a people's budget assembly. One is um, if you hold your fingers up like this, like a triangle, that means point of process. So if there's something happening that you have a problem with or that you feel like needs to be changed, hold this up and I'll come find you and we can work it out. Regarding facilitation. Regarding facilitation, yes. Um, and then also, uh, this right here means wrap it up. So if you've gone over your three minutes, I will do this signal just so you can get a, a sense of that. And if you feel like someone's been talking for way over three minutes, you can do that signal as well. Um, okay, cool. So uh, next up we have Erica. Can I get that sanitized, please? <laughs> Absolutely. We are in a pandemic, yes. <laughs> So $34 million, that's a lot of money, right? I think that we can reallocate those funds um, in ways that actually help our community. Um, food insecurity in Whatcom County is at above 17%. That's over 28,000 people. Food insecurity means they don't know when their next meal is coming. Uh, we are demanding food sovereignty programs. Food sovereignty is defined as the right to people of the right of peoples to healthy and culturally appropriate food produced through ecologically sound and sustainable methods, and their right to determine their own food and agriculture systems. As such, it's important we address both aspects of this concept. Number one, the right to food security. Number two, the health and well being of farm workers because they matter too. Yes. We need to reallocate funds to programs that ensure citizens have access to affordable and nutritious foods with no strings attached. Though Bellingham Food Bank is a great resource for able-bodied folks who have access to transportation and kitchen use, many in Whatcom County do not. The lack of reliable access to nutritious, ready-to-eat meals for marginalized people must be addressed. We demand a program that brings prepared food to encampments and other places with high density homeless population. Yeah. On the notion of sustainable food systems, we demand reallocation to the community, uh, to the community, to community development, C2C, food sovereignty program. This funding will ensure that local farm workers are being properly comp compensated for their labor as they are principal actors in our economy and food production system. They are essential. Yes. I also just wanted to add, I've only been here about a year, uh, but coming to this area, coming to this stolen land, the inequalities that I see around us are quite frankly disgusting. So next up we have Jim. Hi, my name's Jim Peterson. And I don't care what you think about me or what you've heard about me. We have a homeless crisis here in Billingham. And I'm really sick of it. For two years I yelled and I yelled and I yelled at city council about people on the streets would rather die than go to the drop-in center. You don't hear it. We need a non-secular drop-in center that's high, yeah. that's high maintenance. We don't need another low barrier shelter. We need a high maintenance for those that are trying to stay clean and sober. Don't have to be mixed in with those that don't. But we're not doing it. The money you spend on sweeps in 2019, you spent $750,000 sweeping camps. That could have gone to house people. It could have gone for mental health. It, it could have gone for more tent cities. We proved to you behind City Hall. We had a tent encampment there. We housed 33% of the people. 
They're still in the housing. You're not doing it. What do you do? Let's warehouse them all in one building. It's ridiculous. I just urge you, take some of the money, put it into housing or temporary. We gotta do something because we know you're not building affordable housing fast enough. And now that it's September and the rent moratorium's coming up, what are we gonna do when all these people become homeless? Are we gonna blame them? It's time to step up. We don't need a rent moratorium. We need rent forgiveness. Yeah. I can't come up with three months rent plus another month's rent.
saturated market downtown where there is a big barricade up for these people to be put inside of and hang out and they don't have any sun protection on the pavement. You know, like they're just supposed to hang out there in the pavement in the sun and not get pissed off all day, which would be challenging for a lot of people, um, let alone someone with no resources and you know, inability to go buy Yet I digress. Um, one of the towns I lived in where I went to college, Burlington, Vermont, they have already secured a 30% cut in their police funding for the next fiscal year. <laughs> right? We can do it. You can do it. Um, you know, we can lead by example here. You have the power to really make all the other of our incredible progress that we're yeah. Yeah. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you. So next we have Kendall. Hi everybody. I am uh, pretty pretty new in Whatcom County. I moved here last winter, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how there was just zero support for me as a person with an invisible disability coming into this county. I I have a severe brain injury with several cognitive impairments but uh, as well as you can see I have some physical but I immediately of course started looking for mental health services in the county there were none there were absolutely none I'm I am lucky though for the people at GV SAS who I have to say I owe my sanity to at the moment because if, if I wasn't able to talk to somebody compassionate I don't think I would be here right now I don't think I would be able to put this sentence together and that's what we need we need more of that we need more of these community holistic mental health services to get us through the crisis that's going on in our community today and that's all thank you So next up we have an announcement from Ryan. Um, can you raise your hand, Ryan? Great, thank you. And after that we have Jess. And both people consent to being filmed. I just want to talk a little bit about 
what a lot of people have already been talking about is the critical need to address how we support domestic violence and sexual assault survivors. Um, first, I want to just read um, the demand that you said you've read on our list. We demand funding to be allocated to services that support survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. We must expand shelter capacities and permanent housing. We need to implement a restorative justice model for domestic violence and sexual assault cases that is housed outside of the legal system. We need to invest in accessible violence prevention education and perpetrator treatment programs run by community, not the legal system. These programs will offer survivors the capacity to rebuild trust in the community system and to feel supported enough to be safe and engaged in society. Our shelters are currently at capacity. There are every single day, survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence in this community call our organization asking for a place to stay, a place where they can get out of the home of the person that is abusing them, that is abusing their kids, and they have nowhere to go because the shelters are full. We need a tent. Yeah, yeah. Um, just want to make a quick announcement for folks that showed up late. Um, if you want to speak, raise your hand and we'll come find you and we'll put you on stack. And um, then we'll call your name. When you, when you, when when someone approaches you, please tell them if you want your name to be named or if you want to remain anonymous. The topic that you're speaking about and also if you consent to being filmed or not. Okay. Um, the next person, I believe, is, is it bad? Oh, the next person was uh, Jay, and Jay does not consent to being filmed. Can you raise your hand, Jay? Thank you. So no filming on this one. subject. 
But the idea of somebody taking what they need to survive is not considered survival. That's considered crime. What the hell does that mean? You got half of downtown vacant. You got half of downtown vacant and over a thousand homeless citizens here who have been here for years. I've been one of them myself on and off.
Tongue flew taut and already started. The China virus had already started. I understand. Uh, we're here for a lot of things. I'd like to ask the parents here. Just talk to your children. About a week before the superintendent made the call to close the school, I had an email and said, my son came back to me and said, you know, Dad, you're right. I'm Long's only friend right now. I had other kids in school that used to think he was the coolest kid around. Now the parents are all losing their jobs. And the president's telling them it's the fucking Asian virus's fault. All right? It's not this kid's fault. Goddamn sixth grader doesn't even speak English. He's on the receiving end of it. You got kids, you got nieces, you got nephews. I don't care shit, you need somebody in the grocery store. All right? <laughs> All right, part of this whole movement that we're here, why I'm here to support is the idea that we're all in this American experiment together. y'all hear me? All right. Like many of you, I'm a renter. I've been renting for 15 years. Rent keeps going up and wages don't. Seth Fleetwood will tell you that he supports renters. The Democrats, the Democrats will tell you they support renters. But who is one of the biggest donors to the Wacom Dems? Why, none other than Bob Hall, the largest landlord in downtown Bellingham. And what does landlord Bob Hall want? He, he wants the same thing as the other landlords. He wants land values to go up. He wants rents to go up. And the Wacom Dems and Seth Fleetwood consider this parasite a friend. They take his money. Listen, here's how I see it. Workers create all the wealth. Profit is unpaid wages. Profit is theft. Rent is theft. Landlords serve no pro-social function. Landlords are parasites, exploiters. And they love Seth Fleetwood. Who else do the landlords love? They love the police. They need eviction muscle to enforce their blood sucking. Evictions are police brutality. Landlords need cops, and cops need landlords. Cops need landlords to give them buckets of money, benefits, and here is the kicker, impunity. Landlords fund careerist politicians like Seth Fleetwood here to give cops impunity, to cover them in Teflon, to make sure nothing sticks. That's why the Bellingham Police Guild endorsed Seth Fleetwood. That's why the Bellingham Police funded his mayoral, mayoral campaign, because the Bellingham Police know that Seth Fleetwood will give them impunity, cover them in Teflon, make sure nothing sticks. They don't deserve it. And oh, how faithful Seth Fleetwood has been. Despite Bellingham's largest political rally, 7,000 people, despite 70% of Americans supporting our movement, that's the entire country, despite a historic protest movement and years of tireless organizing, Seth Fleetwood's actions these past months and years have shown his unrelenting commitment to protecting the Bellingham Police Department. 
if you won't defund the Bellingham police by at least 50%, you are, in the words of your favorite author, Ibram X. Kendi, a racist. And we will vote your racist ass out. Defund DPD! Defund DPD! Defund DPD! Defund DPD! Give me one second, y'all. Um, so we don't have, we only have two more people signed up to speak. Does anybody else want to speak that hasn't had a chance yet? Okay, great. We're ending this at, um, no later than 8.30 and it's 7, 7.40 right now. So we do have some more time for folks. We can end early, but that's sort of the time that we've scheduled out. So, um, if you want to speak, raise your hand and we'll get to you. Um, okay, we're getting you on the list, okay? Um, okay, um, I'm going to speak really quickly. I'm on deck next. Um, so, um, there's been a lot of talk about um, the CAHOOTS program. That's been a, a big like buzzword. Who here has heard of the CAHOOTS program in Eugene? It's a great program, and that's one of the things that we're demanding in our demands is to have a program that is a mental health crisis response team that can go out and respond to crises in the community instead of the police. However, however, the problem is, is if we just have this crisis response team and we don't have substance abuse treatment and we don't have housing, it's just going to be a compassionate person walking up to someone and being like, oh, I'm sorry you're having a shitty day, right? <laughs> like, we need services to go along with that. So I'm really concerned. I'm really concerned that because CAHOOTS is the most palatable thing for the city council and perhaps for you, that that is going to be the, the bone that we get. And it's not enough. We need that in conjunction with all of these other things that are being talked about, especially housing, mental health, and substance abuse treatment. Because if those aren't meaningful services, the CAHOOTS thing will be a waste of time. Also, um, the other day, we had a theater of resistance event, and we had a giant pinata that uh, was filled with people's ideas for things that they want to see funded instead of the police. And so I want to give these to you um, to read and to take to heart. So next we have Skylar. Can you raise your hand, Skylar? Thank you. And Skylar, that's the attention.
but neither did Bellingham High School. Seth, I want you to look me in my eyes. My full face. Why do we live in a world where 16 year olds have to listen to the people supposed to protect them? Make jokes about them being raped? Why is that okay? Why does that have to happen to anybody ever? Not just me. Anybody. Thank you. Someone who wishes to be anonymous and please do not film. <laughs>